Hello everybody and welcome to this automotive technology video talking about domain controllers. Today we have a very cool topic talking about 1000 base T1 automotive Ethernet compliance testing. For this reason I have invited my colleague Raphael Ridge who is our uh, application engineer expert for oscilloscopes. Hi Nick, thank you welcome. for inviting me to the video studio. So Raphael, uh, what have you prepared for us today? Yes, so today our setup consists uh, of a domain controller board from Marble, so this one that you can see here, uh, and we will be performing 1000 base T1 compliance tests on this board, so this board supports a uh, gigabit Ethernet, and for doing the tests uh, we will use our high-end oscilloscopes, so the one we have here, the 16 gigahertz RTP, uh, and for connecting the signals we will use our Ronish bars automotive test fixture, the RT minus ZF7A, so which is already connected to the oscilloscope. Very nice. So before we begin with the testing, I think it would be interesting to see uh, how we can configure the domain controller with the different test modes. So let's have a look. First of all, uh, Raphael mentioned that we have the ZF7A test fixture. This is uh, the little one that you see at the bottom. Uh, but also if you want to do a uh, different compliance uh, testing for automotive ethernet, the ZF8 uh, is also uh, a good solution. What is important here? You see that the Open Alliance have uh, verified this uh, adapter specification limit to minus uh, 70 dB. And this is something many people are struggling with. Now, our ZF7A and ZF8 uh, boards have been characterized, and this is what you can see with the uh, blue curve that is below the limit line. So really, this is the best solution when we're talking about automotive Ethernet compliance testing. Let's have a look on the Marvell 88Q6113 domain controller board. Uh, what we have here, you see there is an RJ45 port. This is what we connect to our laptop and run the software GUI. And I will show you in a minute how we can modify the different uh, test ports for automotive Ethernet. The board itself, it's powered by a 12 volt power supply that you see at the bottom left hand side. And uh, for today's case, we will use port number five and port number six that are located at the right hand side of this board. And these are uh, MateNet connectors. So uh, when we are running the uh, GUI for this domain controller, uh, we are going to the, the FI or Serders access. And uh, for this test, we will use test mode five. So here you can set your bit 15 and 13, and we will also use the test mode six. And here we will set bit uh, 15 and 14 on the test port six. So, uh, this is just a quick overview of uh, what uh, Raphael has already prepared. So, Raphael, I pass it on to you to have a closer look on the compliance test specification. Thank you, Nick. So, let's have a look uh, directly on the instrument, how the signals look like and how can we start with the test. So, just uh, let me plug in uh, to po port number five. So, okay, as long as we plugged the test fixture to the domain controller board. So we see that uh, we get now a signal. Uh, so in principle, we are ready to start the compliance test. So in that case, uh, I only need to start the scope suite, which is already installed on the instrument, on the RTP. And for doing that, uh, the easiest way to access the scope suite is just going through the application cockpit. Uh, and I will show you that. Okay, to start the compliance test, the easiest way to do it is going through the application cockpit. So you go to compliance where you will see an overview of the different compliance options that you have activated in your instrument. In the case of today, we will focus on 1000 base T1. So when I press the icon, the scope suite uh, will open. So this is a software that you can run directly on the instrument, but you can also run it in a separate PC. Okay, when we have a look here on the scope suite, uh, we can open a session there. 
So what we see now is on the left side, we have the overview of the different tests. Some of them are mandatory, some of them are um, optional. And on the right part, you will see the properties that you can configure for uh, each of the tests. Okay, so let's start with test mode five. Yeah, this is the power spectral density. So we just select the test. Uh, it's already single-ended, so we are ready to run the test. And the scope suite will configure automatically the oscilloscope, do the proper configuration horizontal, vertically, uh, and get the data of the instrument. So it will also show us uh, with a wizard the steps that we have to follow. Yeah. So in that case, it shows you how to connect the device under test. Yeah. So in that case, we know we are using channel one and channel two, plus and minus. And we should expect a signal like that. So if we go back, the signal uh, looks as we expected. So we are ready to perform the test. So during this time, the oscilloscope is uh, acquiring the data, performing the measurements, uh, and putting these results into the report. And I really like this uh, picture uh, guided steps because it's easy for the engineers to configure their duty. Yeah, it's just a step-by-step -step guide through the, through the test. Okay, so now the scope suite has finished with test mode five, so we can have a look at the results. And what we can see here is that uh, three test modes are grouped together since they, all of them, use test mode five. Uh, so we see a pass for power spectral density, for the power output, and for the level voltage. Okay, so now we can do an additional test case using test mode six. And for doing that, uh, I will just uh, connect the signal on port number six. Okay, so now we are ready to perform again the test for test mode six. Let's have a look. Okay, so for test mode six, uh, the properties are already configured, so we just need to run the test. So again, the wizard will show up, showing me the steps that I need to configure for my DUT and then it will show me the signal that he's expecting. So pretty good match of the signal. So we are ready to run the test. Okay, and again, during this time, the oscilloscope will gather the data, the information from the oscilloscope, um, and also get the measurement results from the scope application. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to see the test report, how it looks like. Okay. Yeah, so now we have finished as well. Uh, and just by pressing show report, we are able to see the results of those measurements. And then we are able to look at all the results. So now we have the results here. We have uh, an overview of the test that we have run. Yeah. So here you see if we pass or fail those tests. And if we scroll down, then we will see the details of each test. So it means we will get the properties and the measurement values, uh, as well as a screenshot from the instrument. Great. Rafael, that was uh, really cool, very easy, and very fast to perform compliance testing for 1000 based one So thank you very much for joining me and showing us today how easy it is to do all these tests with the RTP 16 gigahertz. You're welcome, Nick. So if you are interested to know more, please make sure that you visit our domain controller solution page. Stay safe and healthy, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.